Welcome to Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. You can find us at lcara.net, on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Instagram. If you're enjoying the videos we're producing here at Elcara, please help our club out by hitting that subscribe button. Also, give us some feedback on our videos. Click the like button, share with anybody who may find it interesting, and be sure and hit the bell icon to make sure you get notified of the next video release. Well, good morning, folks. This is Chris, KY4CKP. And uh, this week I wanted to uh, kind of give everybody an update on the uh, mobile installation that I have in my vehicle. I have been working to not only upgrade the VHF UHF radio that I was using, which was a Baofeng 25X4, 25 watt, technically a, uh, a four band radio, but here in the US we uh, have access to three of the bands, and that includes 1.25 meters to go with two meters and 70 centimeters, to the uh, Anytone uh, new 578 uh, 3 Pro, which is a tri band radio, but it's 50 watts. And I was going to need to uh, change the uh, where I was connecting for power, the uh, Balfang, <coughs> excuse me, at 25 watts. I could just plug that into the 12 volt accessory adapter inside the vehicle. But for the new radio, I needed to uh, go out straight to the battery, just like I had done for the uh, FT891 that you saw in the previous video, and you can see here on the screen. And I was going to need to rearrange uh, how I had things configured up here on the dash because the uh, Anytone is uh, physically a lot bigger than the Baofeng. So I was just going to be rearranging some things, uh, redoing the connections to the battery in the engine uh, compartment. I was going to be uh, putting in some uh, Anderson power pole uh, fused pigtails and some things like that. So I just wanted to uh, put this together, put together this update and um, uh, get this uh, uploaded now, again just to give folks some ideas on what they might want to do with their mobile radio or maybe even to uh, get in to mobile radio so we'll uh, dive into the details of uh, what I've done here in the last couple of weeks uh, in the next segment all right so here we are in the uh, engine compartment uh, for my vehicle looking at the uh, the battery which is a, a pretty heavy duty uh, dual purpose battery uh, deep cycle starting battery which has a, a really good amount of capacity uh, for running accessories and things. Uh, a little bit more so, certainly, than kind of a typical car starting battery. And you can kind of see here, and we'll get a close-up in a moment, the uh, accessory adapters that I was adding to the battery terminals. Um, you know, it gets, uh, it just gets aggravating trying to keep adding things to the native terminals on a battery. And uh, so I found these adapters that allow you to have, I think it's six, uh, you know mounting points so you just add these to your main battery terminals and then you get six additional mounting points uh, so we can see a little bit better here and uh, so what I wanted uh, uh, maybe it's four mounting points but what I wanted to do is I had run some temporary power for the new Anytone uh, but I wanted to get in some um, heavy-duty pigtails that were fused and also uh, get starting getting switched over to Anderson power poles for ultimate connectivity. This is the power cable I had run for the uh, Yaesu FT891HF radio, and I had put these alligator clips on there, and it was a fused line. Uh, works great. I had that in there for uh, six or eight months, whatever. But again, I wanted to switch over to more uh, stable connections uh, that are screwed in, screw ring terminals, uh, but then still fused, and then also have the Anderson power poles. So that's what I was going to switch out to. So just another view of those accessory ports. There's uh, different styles of these. These are the ones that I went with. They're not terribly expensive. Mount those to the main uh, battery post, and then you've got four nice positions there where you can add additional accessories. And so I've still got some room left. I made the two connections for these two radios, and I've still got some room left. So here we're going to take kind of a quick view of these new uh, pretty heavy-duty gauge uh, pigtails that I got. Now I went ahead and bought these. I uh, could have made these, but I didn't have any uh, any cables that were fused in line, so I was going to have to buy that. And you can buy those that are bare bare wires on the ends, and I could have put my own ring terminals on, and I could have put my own Anderson power poles on, but uh, I could just as easily buy it. They weren't very expensive. And then on the uh, power leads coming from the radios, I did go ahead and cut off 
uh, what I had there and I put Anderson's on those sides so uh, if you have uh, some Anderson power poles it it's, can be worth investing in to get a decent crimper and to get some of the components the plastic components and things because then you can make up your own cables whenever you need to uh, so here we've got things connected uh, and I've still got uh, two additional places where I can uh, connect accessories here in the in these new accessory terminals uh, started to route the wiring back through the firewall we'll see that here in a moment to the inside of the cabin uh, fished it up uh, behind the dash up to where I have things mounted on the uh, uh, the dash uh, for my vehicle there was sort of a little cubby area that I uh, uh, took over to uh, to put radios and also a power adapter and some things like that so I brought everything in through the the main port of the firewall most vehicles are going to have one of these uh, already in there uh, you may just have to look around for it a little bit so um, uh, had, had already routed the power cables uh, through there so went into through the firewall and came out into the vehicle and then again fished it up uh, kept it uh, pretty neat fish it up through the uh, through the dash up to where I have the radios so um, you know if you're doing this uh, for the first time take your time plan your route plan things out just a little bit and make sure you don't uh, get routed into a bad spot or anything and it shouldn't be a big deal so here we're, we're inside the car we've come through that that main port uh, I've got that conduit coming in because the main unit for the FT891 is in the rear of the vehicle and I've just got the head remote head uh, up here uh, at my dash so you see some conduit and some lines that are heading towards the back of the vehicle if you uh, if you could turn around 180 degrees so this again is a picture of the original setup I had uh, the head for the 891 and an external speaker and then the uh, little Baofeng unit uh, slipped right underneath uh, the L L bracket that I fabricated and I made a little sun shield uh, uh, just to go in there just something simple and this worked really good for me uh, the Baofeng was a decent radio and I had decent performance out of it for 25 watts and of course the 891 is pretty nice but I wanted to switch over to this new Anytone uh, it's a much nicer radio it is much more expensive so we would expect it to be a little nicer but I had to kind of rearrange things so I ended up putting the Anytone on the top of this bracket and moving the speaker and the remote head for the FT891 up to the bottom of the bracket which worked out really well so you can see here I've just switched them and I've mounted them to this uh, this bracket I made with some uh, material you can get usually from Lowe's or Home Depot or uh, a hardware type store and I mounted that into uh, my dash and I've, I've tried to put it you know the fewest number of holes and things in the dash that I can so that if I take all this out it's not going to uh, not going to be too ugly and here's both the radios uh, they look great they sound great uh, I've got some clips right here coming up where you can hear um, hear them running with some nice contacts going on and uh, it turned out uh, very nice uh, actually a little bit simpler than I thought it might have been <laughs> I was afraid I might have to fabricate a whole new bracket and everything so let's take a quick listen to just some uh, some stations I picked up All right, so that was just uh, a couple of uh, uh, samples there of uh, just some stations I was picking up just right there in the driveway after I had mounted everything and um, and got things going. Uh, I've used the uh, the new Anytone 578 on a couple of trips down to where my uh, ham club is, which is about an uh, hour and 15 minutes, hour and a half each way, and uh, just a little bit here in town. Um, I'm going to do some more testing with it, but I can already tell that the electronics are definitely uh, better, more sensitive. I can pick up uh, my club's repeater from further away and get a stronger signal. Um, so that's going to be nice. And of course, I expected that, being that it's, again, a, uh, a good quality radio and, and quite a bit more expensive than the Baofeng. But the Baofeng was a nice little radio, and I got a lot of good use out of it, and I'll find another use for it now as well. So again, if you've ever had thoughts about doing radio in the car like I did, 
um, you know, the first thing I did was buy an inexpensive radio and try it out for a little while and just see if you're going to like it, see if you enjoy it or if you just find it annoying or whatever. Uh, I do spend some time in the car either going to and from uh, one of my ham clubs or uh, I do travel regionally for work and I, I drive for some of that kind of stuff. So there's times where I do spend a good, a good amount of time in the car. But uh, you may just want to try it out just simply with some inexpensive equipment. And if you're fine, you're liking it and enjoying it, you can always, as I did, uh, kind of upgrade and uh, maybe add an HF rig uh, later. So just wanted to uh, kind of do this update on the setup here. I'm going to use it and uh, be enjoying it and do some further testing with it. Uh, and that's pretty much it, folks. I uh, just wanted to show some of the things that I did and some things I found. Those uh, accessory adapters for your battery terminals are pretty nice. If you've got some things going on in the vehicle, could be, even include uh, Citizens Man Radio or whatever you might be doing. But that's pretty much it uh, for this one. We'll go ahead and wrap this up. Uh, this is Chris, KY4CKP for Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. Uh, get out there, enjoy your hobby. we got field day coming up this weekend. Uh, hope to see people on the air. 73.